Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Entertainment Buzz. I'm Jake Ferguson. And I'm Josh Lank. Lots of stuff to talk about in this special episode. Oh, absolutely. We got stuff going on in Hollywood. We have a very special interview coming up. It's going to be a good one. We also talk about movies coming out really soon. So oh, yeah, of there's course. lots of things to talk about. Let's get it started right now by finding out what's hot in Hollywood. Following up on a story from last week, Vitaly Sedgwick, the man who lifted Gigi Hadid off the ground after a fashion show in Milan, tried again. On Wednesday, Sedgwick rushed through a paparazzi to attempt his shenanigans on Kim Kardashian at a restaurant in Paris. He nearly kissed the star's iconic booty before being taken down by security. Kardashian has reached out to the French authorities. Last week, he took an elbow, and this week he was taken down. Maybe he'll take a hint one of these days. This dude's pretty creepy. I'm not, he's tried this on a lot of celebrities, including yes. like Madonna mm -hmm. and just really, really famous people. And I just don't get why. Like he said, it's like for artistic reasons, but like. Yeah, this one he mentioned that it was because he was protesting her use of fake implants, which is interesting. Why not just say that instead of trying to touch them? Yeah, but there's no evidence that she has any implants. Nope, there that. is not. So there's that's not. correct. So, so it's, just, it's kind of it's kind of weird, kind of creepy, and, and you know, I think the French authorities have a pretty good case if they decide to pursue it. I mean, they certainly kinda, do. <laughs> that's some sort of assault, isn't that? Yeah, it's not very good. We'll let you know if he strikes again. Yeah. Now the 2016 MTV European Music Awards. Uh, the nominees have been announced, and there's definitely some potential for upset. Now, Beyonce and Justin Bieber lead the nominations with five each. Adele is close behind with four nominations. Other nominees include Kanye West, Coldplay, Rihanna, and Drake. And though this is the MTV European Music Awards, the majority of nominees are actually American or Canadian. Out of the men nominated for the Best Male category, four of them are Canadian. Calvin Harris, the lone Scotsman. How do you feel about the uh, North American invasion of the European Music Awards? It's very interesting to me because it is, in the title, it's the European Music Awards. Why do we have so many North American artists inside this category? I mean, I feel like if they were working in collaboration with these different artists, mm -hmm. if it was written by certain people uh, from Europe, maybe it would work. But to just blatantly have these many stars from our area in the European Music Awards seems wrong to me. Yeah, it is a little bit funky. I mean, Coldplay is from Europe and he they nominated a bunch mm -hmm. throughout the show so I mean like that's pretty cool Tame Impala is in there they're a European band and it's like okay I see it but at the same time like I feel like they should be celebrating that that continent's music a little bit more and less focused yeah. on Canada exactly I mean we celebrate Beyonce enough I mean oh, yeah. she's great but we celebrate her enough here. Why don't we give some, some European artists more love? Yeah, it's good to see she's still queen overseas. That's true. <laughs> and another seemingly stable Hollywood couple has decided to call it quits, unfortunately. Just a week after Brangelina broke our hearts, Naomi Watts and Liev Schreiber have announced their end for their 11-year relationship. The pair said in a joint statement that over the past few months, we've come to the conclusion that the best way forward for us as a family is to separate as a couple. Man, they keep falling down. Like every all these long-lasting marriages, what will happen next? I don't know. It looks like it's the next uh, big Hollywood trend. It's kind of like Scientology. Yes. You know, everyone's gonna get in on it, and mm -hmm. you know, at some point, we're just gonna have way too many Brangelina like African children just everywhere. They're They'll gonna be keep roaming. adopting them, and then they're yeah. gonna split, and it's just like, oh Think no. Think about what the children gonna... before I you know. separate. It is really sad because they're, they're gonna have a lot of trouble. Now, sad news for television. NCIS showrunner Gary Glassberg passed away Wednesday at the age of 50. Glassberg was a co-executive producer and writer for NCIS, TV's most watched crime drama before becoming its showrunner. He's also responsible for creating the spinoff NCIS New Orleans, and his death comes as a shock, just recently signing a three-year deal with CBS to continue as the showrunner for both NCIS and NCIS New Orleans. In a heartfelt statement to E! News, his CBS cast and crew remembered Glassberg. Gary was our rock our cheerleader, and our captain. He inspired us with his leadership, his creative instincts, and his keen insight. NCIS will not be the same without him, and each of us will miss his smiling face and unwavering humor, which lifted us every day. And that's the end of the quote. This is a, a big loss for one of the biggest uh, shows on, on television. It is. It is one of the biggest shows on television. It's very popular, and you can tell that he was very loved by all the people mm -hmm. who worked with him. It's very sad to hear anyone in the entertainment industry, especially someone like that, especially because they... 
it came almost out of the blue, really. I yeah. mean, he just signed another long deal for a very successful show, and it's uh, it's very sad. It's very unfortunate. This week has just been kind of rough all around. It certainly has been. And Ariel Winter is back at the center of controversy as well, as the Modern Family star has been outspoken about her body image again and the harsh spotlight of the stardom. During an interview with Rogue magazine, Winter responded to the backlash of her sometimes racy Instagram photos, stating, quote, It's called being a woman in the industry. It's complete sexism. It's really degrading, annoying, and sad that this is what the media puts out. It's disgusting to me. She has a point. I think, I mean, she's only my age. She's 19 or 18, you know, something like that. And it's kind of weird to see that, that, you know, the media is, like, sexualizing her in so many different ways. It just yeah. doesn't seem natural and I'm glad that she's sticking up for what she believes in. I'm glad she's not just kind of conforming to the haha yeah like I did this on purpose but like exactly or I mean of course she did it on purpose but you know she's not doing it for you know any any sort of personal gain it's just because it's what she wants to do right yeah and hopefully that her message and her uh, feelings towards the subject mm -hmm. will spread and will help make a positive change in the entire industry yeah now the entertainment buzz has to take a quick break, but stick around because coming up we have some on-campus events and industry news that you won't want to miss. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to the Entertainment Buzz right here on Wolf TV. This week we had the amazing opportunity to sit down and chat with Kent Alterman, the president of Comedy Central. How did it go? Um, you know, pretty well. I would say he was a really great guest. I asked him some questions, and he gave me some much better answers than I had ever anticipated. Sure. It was really exciting. Good. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Josh Lane, and I'm here with Kent Alton, the president of Comedy Central. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm Kent, and I'm here with Josh. So we, we have established that dynamic now. Are you interviewing me or am I interviewing you? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's jump right into it. Okay. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you wake up and you say, I'm the president of Comedy Central. What do you do like uh, when, you, when you wake up? You put on some clothes and you... Yeah, well, I, I look in the mirror when I say that oh, okay. first, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I... Uh, how do I start my day? Yeah. I, uh, well, my wife and I have two kids, so the morning is nothing about me and it's everything about them. And uh, I, uh, I, we have a division of labor a little bit because she <laughs> does so much during the rest of the day. So I wake them up and I get them moving towards getting dressed and getting ready and I make them breakfast. And then uh, while my wife gets ready and then she comes 
and uh, sort of takes over and gets their lunch ready while I get ready, and then we all leave. And um, sometimes I take them to school, generally she does, and uh, I go off to work. And then you roll into work, and what's, what's that like? Well, I, uh, most days I commute my bicycle to work, so I start my day with a good uh, head clearing in terms of, that, of riding my bike. And uh, my days really vary. It can be every, they're everything from meetings, meeting with talent and or writers about hearing pitches for new shows, or could be about, you know, sort of different, different parts of the development process, internal meetings with staff. Um, yeah, it's just kind of every day is different. No two days are the same. Uh, often can be set visits or going to a production office to meet with, you know, uh, sort of the creative team of a, of a show uh, or going to tapings. So, yeah, it just really varies. Yeah. And like, what's, what's an ideal day for you at work? An ideal day is a day that I don't have to put out fires. That is also usually a pretty good one. Here. Yeah. Not a firefighter, but... We do the best impression sometimes. <laughs> um, so now, it's really interesting because the past five to ten years, uh, we've seen cable TV move more towards like online streaming. We've seen mm -hmm. Netflix and Hulu, and you know Amazon even coming mm -hmm. out with that. So how do you think it's changed Comedy Central uh, in the past five ten years? Oh, it's changed a lot. We definitely we can't just think about how to do doing shows for the linear platform. Uh, we have to think about all the different avenues and different platforms, digital platforms that they'll go out on, but also just different ways for our talent to sort of meet their fans uh, on on our fans' terms. You know what screens they're, where they are, and when they are, and so and it's changed the development process. We've done, we've utilized a lot of the digital platforms and things like Snapchat for original original content, sometimes it uh, evolves to being a show on the network, and there's a lot of cross-pollination, but we're constantly, there. right now there exists a, a bit of a gap between popularity and consumption on the one hand, and measurement and monetization on the other, so it's still kind of a very disrupted world that's shaking out and no one really knows where it's all going <laughs> to end up, but for me, I try to keep... Uh, our eyes on the, the ball and the ball being discovering, nurturing, and developing great talent with really strong points of view, uh, and trying to just create great content that will resonate with our fans, and just go in good faith that as things shake out, we'll be uh, healthy financially and otherwise, uh, you know, as things start to emerge. Where do you see the uh, television? platform going in the next five, ten years? Uh, I have strong conviction about the future, which is that I don't believe in predicting it. <laughs> so I just try to be on top of nimble and, and responsive. But yeah, I, I, I don't really think anyone knows where it's all going. I think that really, like I said, it's a very disruptive time. And there's a lot of speculation. A lot of people are foraging in new directions to be ready for the future. But I don't think anyone really knows uh, where, where it's all going exactly. Yeah. And moving from the future to the past, um, you've worked on, in a producer position and even in a director position on, on a number of movies and television shows, um, you know, including Elf and Semi Pro. You directed that one. And then you also have uh, a couple dramas in there, too. Uh, Little Children and a History of Violence, mm -hmm. both of which are really, really great movies. Congratulations on those. Thank you. Um, and then you've also had Strangers with Candy and Upright uh, Citizens. Mm -hmm. So how how is it working on something like a comedy like Elf or, or Semi Pro versus working on something more serious, a little bit more uh, tamed? Um, well, I think, uh, I think the roots of it are not that different in a lot of ways. I mean, uh, and, and the roots of it really are in the development of a script. And um, I think the, you know, the sort of the, the underlying process is, is not dissimilar. Obviously, there's differences in comedy and drama. Um, 
but um, but I think that I think what you know one misnomer is that comedy um, maybe has the appearance of being easier, and I think it's actually the opposite. I think comedy is harder, and um, uh, and I think uh, I think dr more dramatic things can be developed and executed kind of in in a little bit more of a contained world or bubble where comedy really does require a lot of collaboration and and a lot of sort of interaction with audience so even with a com with a film once you've done it it's the whole so much of it is created in the post production process and a lot of that is to take it in front of audiences different cuts and screen and see how it plays because nothing's more truthful than audience reaction to things. Uh, and that can help shape where things, there's always surprises and it can help shape things. But a lot of the, the real essence of the process is, is similar in either. Yeah. And in moving from movies to television, like I said, you worked on those two series where you got to see a young Stephen Colbert and a young mm -hmm. Polar. It's pretty good. I mean, Especially now, you look at it, they're like two really, really big names. So, how, how, what's the difference in your mind between working on uh, a series, something like that, versus working in film? Well, film, uh, obviously, it's one shot, it's one self contained, big stakes gamble, uh, and it's, you know, make it or break it in that self-contained pursuit. It can take a long time to develop a project and for a project to come together, but once you're shooting it and editing and getting it out into the world, it's a pretty contained thing with, uh, and it's a contained story. And with TV, it's, you know, it's the opposite. It's, there's a lot of that same, it's a little bit more condensed, the, pro the development process and putting it together, but once you're going, depending on whether it's an eight episode or a 10 episode and how many seasons you do, it's just more of an ongoing exploring where things can go, characters and ideas. So it's different in that sense. It's, it's, it, you know, it's all one thing contained in one regard and then in TV it's more open-ended. Do you have a preference between the two? Uh, I like both of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to do it. Now, with, um, so John Stewart, for most of my life, hosted the uh, Daily Show, actually, like, pretty much from when I was born until last year. And now, for my adult life, we have Trevor Noah doing it. He's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, and I've read a number of reports that say that he's the number one late night uh, show among millennial males and just millennials in general. And some people, uh, like myself, I think millennial is just like a young person who may or may not have a selfie stick or like, you know, constantly documents. But, you know, you have some people who think, you know, they use it in the same context, like a swamp monster that kind of touches everything and destroys it, caused the, the collapse in 2008, probably World War II at some point in time. So what does it mean to an executive? What is being a millennial? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't put so much stock personally in labels. I, I think it's just a way to describe a demographic that's, you know, uh, that there's an, you know, an age demographic. But, uh, and I think that, you know, things, everything changes in culture uh, and there's generational shifts. And so, uh, you know, I think that there's certain attributes about what a young audience, whether you call them millennial or anything else. I mean, I think it can be patronizing to call, try to label people. <laughs> um, so I try not to label them in that way. But I'm sure there's shifts. And I think that it's no accident that a lot of what's attributed to, you know, millennial culture, as it were, coincides with technology and the internet and social media. and. I think it's no accident that a lot of the trends of how people even consume and share and engage with each other content is called millennial and then happens to happen, it happens to be taking place when there's all these technological advances with the internet and social media that fosters that. So it's kind of a mutually feeding dynamic. Yeah, I, mean, I know Comedy Central has done a phenomenal job, especially with getting into you know, social media. Everything's very well put out on YouTube and on the website. It's segmented. It's wonderful. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> Thank you. And 
Congratulations on that one. Thank you. Um, if you had to pick a show to be a breakout show for 20, I guess 2017, 26, end of 2016 to 2017, do you have any early bets? Uh, I would say every show that we launch, I hope that. I, that's my hopes for it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, South Park's picked up for their 20th season. They're working on that one. And they still haven't changed the format of, they, I mean, they do it the week of, right? Yeah, as they've evolved through the years, they've made it more and more concentrated. And there was a documentary a couple of years ago called Six Days to Air. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it, was, it documented the process of how Matt and Trey and their collaborators basically go in on a Thursday and start writing and animating next week's episode, and it basically gets delivered right before it goes on, on the air. It's so interesting to see that process, because I just imagine it's stressful from day one to day six, and it's just, it's amazing to see what they've done for, for so long. But stress it can be a great motivator for creativity, oh. so I think it, they've worked out a system that works for them. That's about all I have. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, what does it mean to be a Wolverine? Oh, well, that, it varies from person to person. There, there's a lot of uh, prestige with it, but there's also just, you know, it's enjoying life while also just trying really hard most of the time, I would, I would say. That's what it means to me. It's, uh, it's a standard to hold someone's, someone to, hold myself to. That's great. So you're living in the moment while you're honoring the, uh, the roots and the tradition and history of the place. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who came through here and did a lot better than I think I'll ever do. I'm not going to start a company by, you know, 18, because I've already passed that mark. But, you know, I can graduate, I think, and that, that's good enough for me. But I just It's wanna... a good start. Yeah. All right. That's nice awesome. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank Thanks you, sir. So, thank you. All right. Wolverines. <laughs> Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back to the Entertainment Buzz. I'm here with Taylor to give you all the latest news in television and film. If you're searching for a funny film to brighten up your weekend, look no further than Masterminds. Zach Galifianakis and Kristen Wiig star in this comedy-slash-action piece alongside Owen Wilson, Jason Sudeikis, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon. The story follows uh, Galifianakis' character, David, as he carries out a $17 million bank heist with his work crush and her gang. Soon enough, he is double-crossed by the group and embarks on a crazy adventure to get back at his untrustworthy co cohorts. 
See if David ends up successful in his mission when the film hits the box office tomorrow, September 30th. How are you feeling about this one? I want to go see it. $17 million? That's some real money. Uh, yeah, and movie money. That's pretty good. It's like <laughs> a, couple, a couple box office weeks, you know, if it's not that great. But, you know, it should be pretty good. I think uh, Galifianakis and Wig and, you know, Owen Wilson. Pretty good actors. It's a good, yeah, it's a good, it's a good cast. I'm excited to see what they can pull out. Well, if you're in the mood for a drama instead, be sure to check out American Honey, starring Sasha Lane and Shia LaBeouf. The film tells the story of Star, an adolescent girl from a troubled home who runs away with a traveling sales crew to drive across the American Midwest. Finding her feet in this gang of teenagers, she soon falls into the group's lifestyle of hard partying nights, law bending days, and young love. You can catch an exclusive screening of this film at the Michigan Theater on t Tuesday, October 4th at 7 p.m. Just send eBuzz an email to get your passes. Well, I'm excited for this one. I want to see how they portray the American Midwest because, you know, I'm from the Midwest. Oh my gosh, wanna... me too? Oh, I know. Oh, Everyone wow. from Michigan is from the Midwest. But I'm excited Crazy. to see. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they what they de like depict it as. Do they depict it more as like urban areas like Chicago, Detroit, mm. uh, Milwaukee, or do they do more like the countryside? Yeah, the countryside. Do they do play on like the oh they only eat like cheese and drink <laughs> beer and like you know I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with that. And the Shia LaBeouf is fantastic, so we'll see how it goes. Now, Disney's newest film, Queen of uh, Cosway, depicts the life of Fiona Mutesi, a uh, Ugandan chess prodigy. Fiona becomes a woman candidate master uh, after her performances at the World Chess Olympiads. Her success opens the door to a bright future and a golden chance to escape from a life of poverty. This film was screened at the 2016 Toronto International Film Festival and was praised for its black cast, setting, subject matter, and elements regarded as rare for a major American studio release. I'm pretty excited for this one. Usually films that do well in Toronto do pretty well over here. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, haven't even really heard about it, but mm -hmm. now listening to it, I'm going to go see it, definitely. Also, Tim Burton's latest creation, Miss Peregrine's <laughs> Home for Peculiar Ch Children, is a fantasy adventure film based off the 2011 novel bearing the same title. The film tells the tale of a boy who follows clues that take him to an abandoned orphanage on Welsh Island. After stumbling into what appears to be a different world, Jake is introduced to the extraordinary Miss Peregrine and her peculiar children. But when the fairy tale takes a horrific turn, Jake is forced to make a life-altering decision in order to protect the ones he loves from monsters. This is exciting. Tim Burton hasn't, you know, quite pushed forward with as many of his movies. He worked on Alice and Through the Looking Glass. That was decent. But I'm excited to see what he does with this one because I feel like he's going to have more wiggle room to kind of be creative. Right. You gotta love the Tim Burton movies. They're always interesting. To say the least. <laughs> now that does it for this week's episode of the Entertainment Buzz right here on Wolf TV. For up-to-date entertainment news and commentary, plus behind-the-scenes videos you can't find anywhere else, be sure to check out wolftv.org. You can also shoot us an email at wolf.ebuzz at umich.edu and be sure to like us on Facebook now for the entire cast and crew, I'm Josh and you've just been buzzed. <laughs>